What's good, Steeler Nation? Happy Sunday, Championship Sunday here in the NFL. Thank you for stopping by to talk some Steelers football with us today. Today I'm answering your questions on the Steelers. Uh, we haven't done a mailbag in about two weeks, so it was about that time to answer some of your questions. And then later, I'm also going to be breaking down a couple of your mock drafts that you submitted uh, earlier in the week. You had some pretty uh, decent ideas that I can't wait to break down with y'all. But before we get into today's questions... Uh, who is the greatest Steeler of all time? Okay, there's Steelers Twitter. I've been having some conversations about this. Uh, for me, it can be anybody, all right? So let me know in the comments section who is the greatest Steeler. It can be uh, the team owner, Art Rooney. It could be a coach like Chuck Knoll. It could be a player like Terry Bradshaw, Joe, uh, Mean Joe Green, Franco Harris. Whoever you think is the greatest Steeler of all time, put it down in the comment section. I want to see what you guys think right now. So the first question that came in came, some, came from urza one Alpha who asked, what one player do you see the Steelers going after in the draft? If they were to trade up, what do you think is the likelihood that they would draft down, draft down, trade down to add more picks? I think but when he says draft down, he means trade down. So first question there, uh, if they were to trade up, I think it would be for not a player, maybe. I think it would be for a position. That would be offensive tackle. Uh, it's looking like that there's going to be really top, there's a top three when it comes to offensive tackle prospects in this year's NFL draft. Broderick Jones, Paris Johnson Jr., and Peter Skaronsky. And many mock drafts have all three of those guys going before the Steelers pick at number 17. So if the Steelers really want to go after a left tackle, a future franchise left tackle, and they want to make sure they get one, if they wanted to trade up, it would probably be for a couple spots up, probably in between 10 and 15, somewhere in that range, and going after somebody that they really like. For me, I think the guy that they're really going to fall in love with is Broderick Jones. If they want to go up and get somebody, if there's one player that I would trade up for, it would be for Broderick Jones. I, I would try my best not to give up too much draft capital because the Steelers are trying to build through the draft right now. But I do think Broderick Jones is that one player. And then if they're trading down, what's the likelihood that they trade down? Uh, I think if left tackle isn't there and that's really the position that they want, I think that the likelihood of them trading down is actually pretty decent. Right now they're trying to build through the draft. You know, this is a very good cornerback class. They can get one later on in the draft. If someone's going to be offering them something, a really juicy uh trade package that maybe includes like a first round pick, I really do think that the Steelers would seriously consider trading down. But let me know in the comment section, which one would you rather do? Would you rather have the Steelers trade up and get a guy like Broderick Jones uh, in the 10 to 15 range, or would you rather trade down for more draft capital? Type U if you would trade up, or type D if you would trade down. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So whenever you get an ad break here on the show, just go ahead, go into the comments section, section find that pinned comment it'll be right there at the top and answer today's question for me I think I would probably rather trade down I would rather address the left tackle position in free agency with like a Taylor Lewan uh, and then go and get more draft capital because this is a pretty darn good cornerback draft class you can get one later in the draft and if you're trying to build through the draft more picks more picks more picks is the philosophy you want to go with in my opinion all right, second question comes from Dominic Schrader, big fan of the show here, who asks if Broderick Jones, Anton Harrison, or Joey Porter Jr. are available at 17. Who are you taking? I'm going with Joey Porter and hoping someone falls to 32. And that's not a terrible answer, Dominic, but you got you you know, man, you watch the show, you know how much I really like Broderick Jones, and I like the fit that he has with the Pittsburgh Steelers. If Broderick Jones is there at 17, I am probably taking him unless... If you're the Steelers, you've already addressed that need in free agency. Like if Taylor Lewan, if they sign Taylor Lewan, I wouldn't take Broderick Jones. But given the way that the roster is right now, uh, given that we haven't gone through free agency, I would pick Broderick Jones. He'd probably be number one on my list because I think that he's got a great mentality in the run game. I think he's got all the physical tools. He didn't allow a sack this year in the SEC. I think that he is the perfect fit for the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, guys, go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now. Now, if you love the Pittsburgh Steelers and you're looking for one place to get all of your Steelers news and rumors content this offseason, we're going to have you covered with draft and free agency analysis. We've got breaking news coverage every time the Steelers make a cut, every time they make a signing, every time they make a trade. We will be... We will be here for you guys, giving you all the updates and analysis. So if you're looking for that one place to get all of your Steelers news and rumors this offseason, go ahead and click that subscribe button right now. 
Next question comes from another Dominic, Dominic Cusano, who asks, do you think the Steelers will add a significant piece at middle linebacker and cut Miles Jack and let Devin Bush walk or keep Jack and add a veteran? For me, for me Dominic, I think that they're going to try to keep Miles Jack. Uh, like I've said on the show, throughout the last couple of weeks, I think that the Steelers are going to try to keep the band together on defense because they actually played very, very well towards the end of the season. When T.J. Watt was on the field, you could make the argument that the Steelers' defense was the best in the National Football League. So although Miles Jack, I think he's a bit overpaid, I think that he underperformed what the Steelers were expecting from him in 2022. I think, generally speaking, they're going to try to keep the band together, but man, uh, if they need some cap space, uh, Miles Jack is probably probably going to be gone and I really don't think they're going to add a significant piece at middle linebacker I just think you know uh, Tremaine Edmonds is somebody that's going to be pricing himself out of Pittsburgh he's going to be asking for like 15 million I just don't see them adding a significant piece so I think they'll go with Miles Jack they might re-sign Robert Splane and then they might draft somebody in the draft uh, and maybe someone like a David Long at a Tennessee and free agency is a possibility if you can get him on a more team friendly deal but I guess we'll just have to see on that front all right, guys, next question here comes from Random, who asks, what wide receivers can the Steelers sign in free agency? So this is, this is a good question because it's a, bit, uh, it's a bit low, okay? So this year's wide receiver class in free agency isn't all that great, plus the Steelers are not going to be looking to sign someone for a big contract. But here are some names that you can keep your eye on. I think Jarvis Landry, is, if, if the Steelers are going to be going after somebody, it'll probably be someone like Jarvis Landry, someone that's been a pro, someone that can play in the slot, someone that can play outside, somebody that's a good blocker in the run game, that's a great leader in the locker room. I think that he, if you could get him for uh, $3 million, right? That's what, he, that's what he made in New Orleans this year. If you can get him for a similar deal to that, I wouldn't mind bringing him in whatsoever. Jamison Crowder, another slot guy, gets open really well. Uh, a, a good pro, but he's coming off an injury. Uh, Julio Jones, if you want to move Deontay Johnson inside, you could potentially go and get a guy like Julio Jones, who's who's had some injuries. He's towards the end of his career, right? He's, he's going to be asking for a pretty low price, so you could get him, and he could be a really good mentor to George Pickens as well. So Julio Jones is a pretty interesting one there. Uh, and then Sterling Shepard, someone that's had a lot of injuries. He's going to be, he's going to, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how much money he makes. Is when he's healthy, he's really, really good at getting open. Really good route runner. I think that he's a really good player, but he's had a lot of injuries, so it'll be interesting to see what his asking price is in free agency. And then Adam Thielen, somebody that's probably going to be cut by the Minnesota Vikings, kind of a bigger slot guy. Uh, I wouldn't really think about bringing him in as much, even though he's a pretty good run blocker. He, he doesn't get open as much anymore uh, against... Uh, against man coverage because he's getting older, he's getting slower. Uh, I wouldn't bring him in personally. But let me know in the comment section right now, should the Steelers sign a wide receiver this offseason? Type Y if you think yes, or type N if you think no. For me, the answer is yes, as long as you're not paying too much for him, right? If you can get him for less than $5 million and it doesn't take away from any of the, of the other needs that you need to go get this offseason, I, I say why not? Getting Jarvis Landry for $3 million would be a great get for the Steelers in my opinion. All right, so now I'm going to react to a couple of your guys' mock drafts. Thank you to everybody that submitted a mock draft this week. I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, formulate a mock draft and then put it in the comments. Uh, so we have three today. First one comes from Dominic Schrader. Second time he's been on the show today. So Great job, Dominic. Uh, but So here was his mock. So we had uh, Joey Porter Jr. in the first round, then Anton Harrison, Noah Sewell uh, with the second, second rounder there, DeAndre Coburn, uh, Dewan Jones, the right tackle, Ronnie Bell. Uh, and so we have two seventh-round picks. We don't have a sixth-round pick right now. Uh, and then Juice Scruggs, uh, the center. So my reaction to this is it's pretty solid. I really do. Jo uh, Joey Porter Jr., somebody that's a bit more of a developmental prospect, in my opinion. He's play he, he, you know, he really needs to learn how to play in press coverage. He needs to learn how to hand fight, all these different stuff. And he's also, he grabs a lot. So that's, the, that's my problem with him is that he's almost too physical. Right now, he's very, he can't block him in the run game. He's strong. He's long. He's got the build of a true lockdown corner. And he could definitely develop into somebody that can be a true lockdown cornerback once 
so I wouldn't mind taking him at all in round one. Then you got Anton Harrison, the left tackle. Bit of a smaller dude, needs to put on some more poundage, but he reminds me a little bit of Charles Cross from last year, where he's got really good technical refinement, good hand placement. I don't mind that necessarily, uh, especially if they don't address left tackle in the in free agency. Then Noah Sewell, I think, is a bit more of a developmental prospect. Really, really great athlete. Really hard hitter, somebody that I think uh, Mike Tomlin might really fall in love with. But the technical stuff, you know, the technique really, really needs to get better, in my opinion. Haven't done much research on Coburn. Dewan Jones, right tackle, big body. Definitely somebody that's worth taking a look at, especially if he falls to the fourth round. So that's a pretty darn good pick there. Then Ronnie Bell, good receiver. That's probably going to be there towards the later rounds. I don't know if he'll be there in the seventh, but uh, pretty decent pick there if the Steelers could get him. And then Juice Scru uh, Scruggs at center. Mason Cole had a pretty decent year this year, but you know it's definitely been his best year. He could regress towards the mean of his career. It'd be nice to have a rookie in there just in case that he's not doing that much. Next guy up here, Declan C, who had Peter Skaran at number 17. Uh, so I really think that Peter Skaronsky probably won't be there at 17. Uh, so he says that he thinks that he will be there because of his arm length and size. But I mean, the same, the, uh, Rashawn Slater, right? The Chargers, uh, great left tackle in the NFL. He had the same issues and he, he was taken in the top 15. So I, I really don't, and now that he's had success in the league, I really don't think Skaronsky is going to be there at 17. If he's there, great, but I'm just not sure if he's going to be there. Osiris Torrance, we talked about him the other day on the show, the guard, really, really good player. If he's there at 32, Steelers should definitely consider bringing him in. Uh, and then Emmanuel Forbes or Kelly Ringo uh, in the at pick 49. I think there's a chance Forbes gets there. I think Ringo is going to be taken by then. I think Ringo is just going to jump out of the gym uh, at the combine. I think that he's just going to be an absolute insane tester this the, like in the combine and his pro days. I think he's going to go first round, but Forbes could be there. And then Noah Sewell is someone that's is, is a name that's a bit popular there in the third round for Steelers fans. Not bad whatsoever. All right, guys, so let me know in the comments section right now before we reveal the last mock draft here, who is the worst Steelers draft bust in team history. Let me know in the comments section right now. There's going to be some great debate down there. Artie Burns is the one that comes to mind for me personally, just because that's a bit more recent. But I mean, there's a, there, there's a couple there that could be definitely debated. All right, guys. So last one here comes from Pell Pike. I hope I'm saying that right. Who says Broderick Jones at number 17. If he's there, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, and then at 32, Kelly Ringo or Siaki Ika, I would be cool with that as well. Like I said, I'm not sure if Kelly Ringo gets there, but uh, that would be great if he did. And then 49th, uh, it's another kind of duel there. So uh, Jervin Dexter or Emmanuel Forbes, I'm perfectly cool with that as well. DeMarvin Overshown in the third round. That would be definitely interesting because Overshown is somebody uh, that's got really long arms, Really, uh, like really great physical attributes, but like Noah Sewell, they're a project. There's a lot of projects at the inside linebacker position in this draft class, in my opinion. Overshone is one of those players, but third round is about right for him, I'd say. Then Keo Blue Kelly, uh, so he was somebody that was actually a bit higher up and has been falling the last couple of weeks and months. So to get him at 117 would be fantastic. That's actually realistic. Uh, if you take a look at the consensus media big board right now. And then Habakkuk uh, Baldonado, the edge at 212. That would be, uh, I haven't done much research on him. I don't know him. I, I don't know. I, I can't say that I know too much about Baldonado right now. Definitely as the draft season goes on, I will learn more about these later round dudes. But overall, I think that these three mock drafts were pretty darn good. Uh, I think that, you know, getting Broderick Jones in the first round would be fantastic. Uh, you know, there's some very interesting picks here. So great job, everybody. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's show. I appreciate you guys. And, you know, it's Sunday. It's Championship Sunday. This video is going to be coming out during football. So if you watched this video and made it to the end of the video, you are a real one. All right, you are a true yinzer if you made it to the end of the video today. So go ahead and identify yourselves in the comment section right now by typing yinzer for life in all caps. I appreciate you guys here on a Sunday. Sunday. Enjoy championship weekend, fellas. I really do appreciate you, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.